Hello, this is Paul from We Love Games. I wanted to get out my thoughts and uh, predictions when it comes to episode 6 of We Love Time, The uh, Flame of Tarvalin. I also wanted to let everybody know that if you are interested in my content, please feel free to like, subscribe, and other things uh, regarding following me on Twitch. If you're interested, I stream there daily uh, during the weekdays. And if you want to have some conversations about the Wheel of Time, please feel free to drop in there. I'm always live and willing to talk with anybody that wants to talk. Um, also, real quick, right before I get into my actual spoiler and predictions uh, filled content regarding the uh, next episode, I wanted to address some of the comments that I have received in my videos. Um, I'm an optimist, so... I wouldn't say that I'm just a person that enjoys every single episode. I do have criticisms about the episodes, but I don't like to draw um, attention to things that I particularly nitpick because I'm consuming this as a new form of media. So if anybody's upset that they are putting out terrible content regarding the show, that's your prerogative. I apologize, but I hope that you can one day see the greatness that is the show as it is now. If anybody's upset about that, please feel free to leave a comment and I'm happy to discuss it. Or also meet me on Twitch and feel free to talk to me there. Uh, we can discuss live one-on-one -on -one and we'll see what we can do. But aside from that, let's get into my actual predictions for the Flame of Tarvalin. So what we see from the brief bit of teaser that we got, uh, I think it was today or yesterday for the next episode, is we see a few things. One, we see Perrin apparently getting some medical attention and Egwene worried about him uh, because she saw his transformation like he did when she uh, freed him from the ropes and she also is noticing that he can probably talk to wolves. I legitimately hope that when it comes to this series that Egwene and Perrin have a much, much more refined kinship. Uh, it always seemed like a shortcoming in the books to me that Egwene and Perrin did not become more attached or more close because of their Dreamwalker capability. I thought that it was always a drastic uh, issue when it comes to the overall uh, unreliable narrator where Perrin and Egwene are both getting this rigorous training and there's no crossover between the two of them where Egwene is worried for Perrin even though Perrin is more capable in the dream than her by the end of the series. Um, they're both very capable but Perrin is beyond capable. Uh, again there's very classic moments uh, like you know it's just a weave and things like that where Perrin is blatantly flexing how powerful he is in the dream. So Again, I want this to be something where they kind of build them into a friendship that is for, that is uh, forthcoming and open and out there where they can confide in each other. So that's a hope that I hope for the entire series. But when it comes to this next episode, I can see it as Egwene desperately seeking out treatment for Perrin and potentially finding Nynaeve in the city after they encounter because there is uh, that scene that we got in one of the trailers where, you know... Um, Egwene runs and jumps into Nynaeve's arms. I can see this as a point where Egwene says Perrin needs help because she takes him back to the Tinker Camp and they can't treat him uh, for the lacerations on his back. So I'm hoping that that's something. Uh, we also get a brief, there's a very brief shot and I'm not going to put any footage in this video because I don't know how and also I don't want to get copyright strike or anything. There's a very brief shot. So if you go back and watch the teaser, there's a brief shot of another Dragon's Fang on you know a plank of wood or something so again we're getting more emphasis on the dragon's fang and we're also getting the terminology for the word sidar which is the flame of tarvalin uh which has about four meanings and i really really genuinely want a beautiful exposition from our boy loyal explaining what the amarlin seat is to the boys in the inn and explaining how it, the flame of tarvalin is not only uh something that is a you know the name Amarlin seat that she is a representation of that it's also the symbol for the Aes Sedai now that only women use it because the dragon's fang is the symbol for men and we get a reference to Sidene and Sidar finally after six episodes which is fine because it's given us time to absorb the magic system and how things work um at least over the course of the first five episodes so I'm hoping that we get a nice exposition dump also phrased as don't you already know this from you know loyal from our best boy because he needs to have as many speaking lines in this episode as possible um 
Now, we also have seen in a brief uh, teaser drop that they put out there, uh, some more of Loghain confronting the Aes Sedai in the tower. Um, Suan Sanchi, who is also the Flame of Tarvalin, also the Amarlin Seat, also all these other terminologies that she is named after, um, it blatantly states, take his chains off, he's not a threat, it does not matter, he's already been gentled, so why do you have chains on him just to parade him around? Like, she's doing the wise leader trope, which is, you know, seeing beyond just what someone has physically, but also into, you know, the entirety of the situation. And Loghain curses um, the, uh, the Aes Sedai that, uh, Karina, that, that died in two episodes ago, and um, everybody jumps backwards, and apparently uh, uh, Liana is going to bring order to the room. So that's the teaser that we got, and it seems like Loghain is substantially more, um, like, he's kind of a, he's kind of flexing, saying like, yeah, I took on nine of you guys, and I killed one. So maybe he's going to be a little more pretentious in this, in this particular series. We'll see. But um, when it comes to the overall bits of story, I think that there is going to be a form of judgment passed down by Suan Sanche to Moraine. And this judgment um, might not be public. Like, they'll have a public judgment, but then there's going to be a point where uh, Suan says that she wants to meet with Moraine in her chambers. And we are going to possibly get the scene that happens in Faldara in book two, which uh, if you're unfamiliar like with the exact scene that I'm talking about, obviously it's very early in book two, but there's a scene where Suan and Moraine finally get to meet when they meet in Faldara, and Suan and Moraine embrace, and they pretty much disclose, hey, how's it going? You know, did you manage to find the boy? Did you manage to find the girl? Did you manage to find whoever's going to be the dragon? And Moraine is going to be able to give her update and status report directly to Suwon. Because even Liana was not privileged to this, which Liana for, uh, is the, uh, the Keeper of the Chronicle. So all of this, I'm hoping, will play out. Um, we do get some other cuts uh, in the episode uh, highlight reel that they put out, which is Barney, Harris, uh, Matt saying, you know what they do, you know what Aes Sedai do to men like me. Because uh, even Barney, or sorry, I keep calling him Barney, um, Matt is convinced that potentially he can channel. Uh, we do see Rand drawing his sword, which could be potentially Lan entering the room and Rand trying to defend Matt because Nynaeve's already there and Lan is coming to find Nynaeve because she's gone to visit the boys again. Um, and this could be where, you know, we finally get a bit of a reunion. But I think that the episode is honestly going to end on... Uh, one of two things. So there's possibly going to be a healing done to both Perrin and Matt. I would not put it past Perrin and Matt both being healed potentially in this episode. Uh, Perrin by Nynaeve and Matt potentially by the tower and everybody like what happens in book three. Again, Rafe has pointed out that portions of book three are going to be in this book. And the only portions of book three that can make sense would be something along the lines of Matt getting healed from the dagger. And because Matt does not look as disheveled or crazed in the promo shots that we got for them walking up to the Waygate. I also see um, Moraine meeting Loyal. And I also see Moraine telling Loyal, we need you to take us to the Waygate and guide us through the ways. And that's going to be kind of the exit shot is going to be them riding up to the Waygate. Um, hopefully... That will be where we get to end the episode. Uh, when it comes to other things, uh, we do see one bit of Lan uh, reaching down and like turning what appears to be someone sleeping, which could be Matt. Um, again, this plays into my whole theory of Lan running into the room at the Light's Blessing to find the boys because he's trying to find Nynaeve because she's disappeared again. Because like I mentioned before in my review, Nynaeve does not mention to Moraine that she knows where the boys are. <laughs> it's just something that doesn't get mentioned at all at the funeral. And I know that this last episode was extremely water heavy and we got a lot of lore in regards to the bond between Water and Aes Sedai. Um, there is a theory floating around out there. I don't fall in line with it, but there's a theory that Fane is the one that killed Steppen. I don't think Fane killed Steppen. I think that it cheapens a bit of the death 
I think, and people also say it wasn't Fane, it might have been a gray man, because Steppen's too, you know, strong-willed or whatever, but you could see the classic signs of depression and spiraling, and he set it up where Lan wasn't able to protect him, and all this stuff, and it was just him wanting to go out on his own terms, which, it's sad, but it's probably what genuinely happened. I don't theorize gray man, I don't theorize Fane, I theorize that Steppen got you know that he got depressed and ended himself because he was too depressed at losing Karina. Now, when it comes to Padden Fane, yes, Padden Fane is present. We have seen him in Tarvalin. He is hanging out there, and on the other end, he's also smiling every time he looks at the boys, which means that if and when we ever get anything where Fane is revealed, we may get a cut back to every scene that Fane was there with more context. And that's something that you can do in television that builds up a lot of suspense and interest for the viewer. Because you get these things from an alternate perspective that tells you what's going on. That possibly Fane was the one dr trying to drive the Trollocs and Murdral into the town, into Shatter Logoth. Uh, possibly they wouldn't do it, and Fane just kills one of the Murdral right there, and that's the first time that we see a Murdral die, and this like solidifies how powerful Fane is as an antagonist, that Fane possibly planted the dagger for Matt to find. Fane whistled to get Matt to wake up, to come out. Maybe it's this whole thing with, uh, there was something I've seen in old comedy shows where like a person does the same tick every time something's mentioned to try to manipulate someone to do something so possibly the whistling is something that he's done to matt to manipulate him i mean there's theories out there that fane's a forsaken that fane can channel that this all this stuff can happen fine let that be but i don't know what fane is to the story yet because we may just get the revelation that fane is balsman like we don't know in this thing and they're also talking about combining certain characters in the fan base and things like that I'm for it as long as it makes sense. And Fane is one of those characters that has... He, he He's good, but he has a terrible end result in the books. And for anybody that is a super big Burke purist, you need to understand that part of an adaptation that is beneficial is that you can go back and potentially rectify, retcon, fix, adjust, or change certain bits of characters to make them more impactful. And Fane, while he had all this buildup as an antagonist, had a terrible end. To an extent that almost the entire community doesn't talk about it. Because it's not well done. And it's not even Sanderson's fault or Jordan's fault directly. Sanderson pointed out that he wished he had more time with Fane's character. He wished he had a better resolution for Fane's character. And the show has an opportunity to do that. So I'm for it. Um, when it comes to other things, there's also the casting of Suan Sanche as a young child. So we may get a flashback to Tyr for Suan, possibly when she's, you know, first learning how to channel. Maybe we'll have that that whole uh, conversation that happened on the boat from Faldara between Suan and Nynaeve, where Suan is trying to coach Nynaeve on how to channel, and maybe she gets a flashback to how you know, she felt when she first touched the source and she's trying to explain it because we have to have an explanation for the child character being cast as Suan. Um, I do not believe that we are going to get a explanation for her tattoos. I don't think that we are going to get an explanation outside of potentially someone saying that she's from this, that she was raised by the, by the Athan Mir. That would probably be it. And and the thing is, is that if she is Athian Mir, if she is from the Sea Folk, then she's extremely good at negotiating, which is what they do. They barter. So it means that she has the ability to make, you know, very well put together deals that benefit both sides, but benefit one side more heavily and nobody notices it until it's too late. Again, there's a lot of things that you can do with Suan being from the Athan Mir. It could just be something that is a trait of tier where you get tattoos. Maybe they're just amalgamating tier to be kind of the Athan Mir's home instead of them being, you know, constantly at sea where we have to deal with Tremal King and all those other places. Again, it's 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 all theorized. It's all something that we don't know yet. And again, and I'm trying not to make these videos too long, but 
the overall is is that I guarantee you we're getting the trial of Loghain because it's been shown in the spoilers. We're probably going to get the healing of Matt and Perrin. And if the healing on Matt is going to happen, it's probably not going to be the final healing. It might be something that they have to do as like an end climax. And that explains the actor changing um, where, you know, uh, I think maybe Suan will say we can do this, but we need, you know, all the most powerful healers and they're currently out of the tower. So when you get back from your little you know Tristan to uh, the blight then you know this and that this could potentially be a rivalry setup maybe there is no affection between Moraine and Suan uh, there is that whole thing with her weird you know uh, what looks like a what's it called a, uh, a the portrait that she opens up and it looks like a picture of herself maybe it's a Turan Grial something that she can use to communicate with Suan in secret or with someone else maybe there's a lot of animosity between Suan and her Maybe they're falling falling away from them being actually allied in this. Maybe they're on opposite ends. But I think that the overall like scope and what they're going to do with establishing shots and things like this in this episode, I think by the end of the episode, we're definitely going to be leaving Tarvalin. We're going to have Loyal in the party, which makes me happy, because the more that he's in the party, the better. And everybody's going to clearly be reunited by the end of this episode. Um, in order to set up for episode 7, which has already been titled as The Darkness Along the Ways, which means that our party will either be in the ways or entering the ways at the start of the next episode, which means everybody has to be together. So we are going to get quite a few shots, but overall I think that the big twist in this particular episode, the thing that's going to be the, um, the thing overall is probably going to be the reveal of Fane or potentially the reveal of um or potentially the uh the reveal for why um Egwene took the rings um no clue why she actually took the rings outside of trying to potentially end uh Valda's little trophy case maybe she felt that it was vile but there's also a theory floating around out there that um, Egwene might use those rings to impersonate Nice Sedai. I. I think it's a little quick for that, and I don't know if that's going to be how they how they uh, portray those rings. Because again, uh, this gives Valda a motivation because Egwene didn't kill him um, to go after Egwene in particular and Perrin. And I hope that they kind of get to be buddy-buddy throughout the series where the two of them are more aligned with each other and they're discovering dreaming together. As opposed to Perrin learning stri strictly from the wolves and Egwene learning strictly from the Aiel. Um, aside from that, I, I'm pretty sure I'm done with my overall predictions. I apologize for the video being so lengthy. Um, and again, if anybody's interested, follow me on Twitch. I'm on there daily. And I will see you guys later. So I appreciate your information, uh, your 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 viewership, and hopefully uh, we get a good ending to episode six, and we usher into episode seven, and we'll be done by Christmas. So uh, have a good rest of the day. Bye bye. <laughs>